What's up everyone, Force here, and today I've got something special for you. I'm gonna walk you through a gameplay session that I had, some hands-on time, with Immortals Phoenix Rising. Now you may know this by its previous name, Gods and Monsters, it is a brand new open world adventure game. The video is being sponsored by Ubisoft, as they recently gave me a chance to sit down and play an early version of the game for a few hours, and what I wanted to do is kind of take you through the experience that I had. I'll show off the combat, the exploration, and then some of the very activities that I got to see. But first, let's cover some of the basics of the game. Again, it is an open world adventure game from Ubisoft, so there's going to be a lot of familiar elements if you've played open world games before. We play as this forgotten hero who's on a quest to save Greek gods. There's an action combat system with basic attacks, combos, and special abilities. You can climb, glide, and even ride a mount as you explore the open world with its seven distinct regions. And you'll be interacting with all sorts of creatures and gods from Greek mythology. And then, you know, beyond the fighting and exploring, there are also a variety of different things like puzzles, vaults, and mysteries for you to discover. So let's go ahead and jump into my gameplay session and take a look at what the game is all about. And of course, as always with sponsored content, if you guys like what you see, there's a link in the description below. All right, so let's get into it, starting off with the very beginning of my play session. They put us on this high vantage point right in the center of the map, and this gave us a good look of the surrounding zone. We had access to one of the seven zones in the game. Now, this is where they also introduced us to the Farsight mechanic. This is just a scouting mechanic. You, you should be familiar with it if you've played pretty much any open world game in the past 10 years. It's also exceedingly popular and used in many Ubisoft open world games. Basically, you peer through this enhanced vision and are able to mark various points of interest and items on the map. So after checking out the map for a bit, uh, I was then introduced to the flight system. System. This is one of the various uh, movement abilities in this game, in addition to climbing and a mount. So with flight, you've got a double jump, and then you can essentially glide. Uh, you're going to be limited by the amount of stamina that you have. So besides just gliding, there's also a boost to speed you up. You're able to dive down, and then you can just straight up drop out of the sky whenever you like. I, I am also managed in my first flight to completely miss my mark. I don't know why I was incapable of landing on this thing. I it's definitely user error, but... Not a big deal, because the playing around with flying uh, quickly moved on to an introduction to the combat system. I've played plenty of action games, so I'm pretty familiar with the fundamentals. You've got a light and heavy attack. The game has both dodging and parry systems. And then there were four abilities for us to use. Now, since this was my first fight with this particular game, it was pretty sloppy. Like, the gameplay here, not very impressive. I was basically really trying to figure out and manage the controls and, and try to learn what the abilities were. And of course, in a situation where I'm unsure of what I'm doing, what would any self-respecting gamer do? pause and read the abilities. And that's exactly what I did. I jumped into the skills menu, which shows these uh, various light and heavy attack combos and special bonuses that they grant. And then we have the powers or the uh, abilities, if you will. And we had access to a hammer slam, this guided arrow, the ability to call our bird phosphor out of the sky to stun an enemy, an AOE uppercut, a levitation skill, and a dash. So now that I learned what I can do, I went ahead and, you know, still finished the basic combat encounter, but because this is not really impressive and doesn't give you a good sense of the combat, I actually quickly want to just fast forward in the session a, a moment to show you uh, uh, how the combat can look once someone is better at it, basically. So this right here is a few hours in. I'm a lot more familiar with the systems, and I think this is a better display of how the combat works. As you can see at the start here, there is a stealth system, and beyond stealthing up and getting that huge bonus, Bonus. Uh, on display here, you see some well-timed dodges, which appears to like slow down the entire vicinity, which is really, really cool. If you time your dodge properly, everything around you is going to slow down. I really liked that. And there's also the slow down mechanic to the hit of a lot of different abilities. I do some juggling here, again, alternating between light and heavy attacks and jumps and just doing all sorts of different combos. And then my skills, um, if you couldn't tell, the favorite of which is the slam hammer. It was just so damn powerful. I could not... I cannot stop using it. But yeah, that's I think that's a pretty that's a 
pretty quick good look at how the combat feels when you're more fluid with things. But let's go ahead and head back to the start of my play session. So again, I wrapped up that combat tutorial, and then immediately after, they directed me to enter my very first vault. So vaults are kind of what I'd call like these mini challenge dungeons. Basically, they're these chasms in the ground, and you jump in, and then they're instantly transferred to some other dimension. I'm sure it's called something relevant to Greek mythology. Uh, and in there, you have to complete various challenges, be it movement, combat, or puzzle related. So this very first vault combined movement and puzzle challenges. It's, it's essentially like, hey, are you capable of crossing this gap? Whether you need to double jump or dash or grab onto the edge or whatever. And can you activate these pressure plates? Overall, it was pretty straightforward. I had a, a few hiccups here and there, but it was pretty much a breeze. I made my way through to the end and in doing so collected a piece of Zeus's lightning, which essentially this is uh, one of the upgrade resources in the game. And then after that, I get ejected from the vault and immediately am given a story quest. So basically the synopsis is this ancient forge has gone out and it's my job to relight it. And I was given uh, two options for how to complete this. I could either ignite the furnaces near the forge entrance or unblock the air vents in the back. Now I decided to go for the furnaces because there were four targets there instead of two. And I thought, eh, it's more to do, sounds good to me. Uh, but before I headed there, I decided to do a little bit more exploration. Uh, so I turned around and saw this big mountain and I said, hey, can I climb this? And I could. There was a scaling in the game similar to the gliding. It is limited by your stamina system. But I climbed the side of the mountain and got myself just high enough to go ahead and glide on down and grab uh, another one of the game's four collectibles, similar to the lightning that we finished and collected at the end of the vault. Um, these different four collectibles are used to upgrade things like your equipment, your stats, and your abilities in the game. And then I started to head to the furnace. Now it was kind of far away and gliding alone didn't quite cut it. And that's when I learned about the mount system. So essentially you have this mount that you can call in at any time, basically, as long as you're on the ground. And it's got its very own stamina bar as well for sprinting. So this is gonna make ground travel just a little bit quicker. Although I will say uh, whenever possible, I just try to glide. I, I really tried to avoid basic uh, ground travel as much as possible because when you have wings, why the hell wouldn't you use them? Uh, so I made my way to the forge and upon arriving, the objective was uh, pretty straightforward. There's four furnaces, I've got to light them and then find out uh, what exactly put them out in the first place. Now, each one of the furnaces had these large groups of enemies right in front of it that I had to fight and defeat. And then once I worked through those, there was these corruption pieces like blocking the furnace. I had to get rid of that and then shoot and guide an arrow through some fire source in the local vicinity into the furnace to reignite it. Now the forge area itself uh, with the four furnaces and the vents and everything, it was a pretty large like impressive looking landmark. There were these massive stairs and these pillars of fire. I just think overall it was a, it was a pretty cool set piece. So I finished the first fur furnace and as I was making my way to the second, came across these guardian type enemies. This was one of the larger enemies that I'd seen up until this point. It had a few different attacks and tons of health, which kind of made it a a bit more of a challenging fight, especially while it was still early on and I was relatively new to the combat. So I fought a few more guardians, cleared a couple packs of enemies, and lit the three remaining furnaces. Then, upon completing my task, I was rewarded with my first new weapon. It was this light sword that would refill my stamina on hit, which was an easy choice because the other weapon that I had did a little extra damage when I was at full health, which at that point, I was rarely ever at full health come uh, the start of a fight. So, you know, extra stamina sounded good to me. So I put on the new sword and made my way onto the first boss. This thing was called the Clanking Automation Lieutenant. This was actually just kind of a larger version of those guardians scattered around the forge from before. Um, He had pretty much all of the same attacks, but with one special ability of his own, he would burrow himself into the ground, uh, stick out his arms, shoot out these uh, projectile lasers, and then spin around in a circle. What do you do when you've got spinning lasers? You jump over it. Pretty simple. Uh, the fight wasn't actually terribly difficult. You know, I had to heal a few times, but I did manage to beat him on my very first attempt. Now, it's worth noting here that I was playing on the third of five difficulties. So straight in the middle, this was normal difficulty. Uh, during this play session, we actually only had access to the easy and normal difficulty options. I would have loved to probably bump the difficulty up at this point because, uh, 
you know, I started to get more comfortable and combat started to feel a little easy. But anyways, I killed the boss, I relit the forge, and in doing so, I managed to piss the hell out of what looks to be the big bad boss in this game, Typhon, or Typhoon, <laughs> sorry. He erupted this volcano and summoned this chaos spewing tornado. And at this point, we're about 30 minutes into my two hour play session. And with the rest of the time, basically what I decided to do is just venture around the open world and check out what there was to see. So uh, around the forge, the previous enemies that filled up the location were just replaced with these new, larger, angrier ones. Um, I also stumbled across this world boss, Lieutenant Brontis. And again, pretty cool fight, this big, massive guy. If, 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 you know, when you have this massive character, what do you do in these games? You just stick by their feet and that's exactly what I did. I basically hugged both of his feet and smashed away with my light attacks, heavy attacks, throw in a few hammers for some massive damage, and down the boss went, and I got myself another piece of loot. Now, from that point forward, I decided I was gonna focus on checking out the various activities and points of interest that were in the open world. Challenges are one of these things. Now, there was the slide puzzle, which at first I had to find the missing piece for, so there was an alcove right next to it. I busted down the entrance to to the alcove, went inside, had a few different pressure plates that I had to position myself and use rubble and these uh, boxes in the environment to kind of trigger them to get myself past these uh, gates and this laser wall, which unlocked to the final piece. And then it was a simple slide puzzle, four piece slide puzzle, which I totally, uh, I totally finished this, you guys. Don't worry, trust me. I definitely did not not finish this. <laughs> Another challenge in the environment was this thing, uh, this little like mini ruins where I had to do a couple things. First, I had to find objects to block these two sets of lasers. And then from there, there was another pressure plate, but this one had like this weight requirement. So first I just put myself on, but it wasn't enough. So then I grabbed a rock and threw that on, but that plus me still wasn't enough. So then I grabbed a larger rock, but that wasn't enough. So then I grabbed another rock and that finally triggered the plate and allowed me to to, uh, go ahead and open the chest. And this was pretty awesome because it rewarded me with this badass new helm cosmetic. So apparently, yes, there, there are cosmetics in this game too. There was a guided arrow challenge. Now this actually took me several attempts. It's simple in the fact that all I had to do was shoot an arrow and guide it through these markers, but getting the perfect angle to hit all the corners and the bends took a little time to figure out, but I finally got it it's successful. Good job. It's, I did better than the slide puzzle. <laughs> I also, uh, in the environment, found several hidden areas. Now, I'll put hidden in air quotes because they weren't, they were just, it's pretty obvious boulders in the environment. It wasn't something that you would likely miss. So yeah, there were there were these boulders, they hid this cave, but inside of the cave, there was a bunch of resources on the ground as well as a chest, which in it were a bunch of resources. I did a bit more fighting, taking on some of these large groups of enemies. As I've said a few times at this point though, I, at this point, I was just ultra confident in the combat and the difficulty mode made none of this really much of a challenge. There were also two more vaults in the world that I jumped into to check out. So the first vault was mostly actually just jumping puzzles. Basically, I had to avoid incoming projectiles, spike traps on the ground, all while trying to navigate around these moving platforms. And there was a couple of light fighting in the mix, but it was mostly focused on that jumping puzzle element. And the second vault that I went into was actually entirely focused on combat. I opened this lever, swung open the doors and then I just stepped into this large arena and all it was was a several waves of enemies that were summoned in they got progressively harder again it wasn't that hard kind of had me wishing at this point that I could jump up the difficulty because it just I, there, I, there are two harder modes than normal but it was so you're watching this combat and it's like it's, it's so easy at this point hopefully those harder mo modes are a bit more challenging and yeah fought the waves of enemies went to the end collected my reward after after that, I did a little bit more roaming around between riding my mount, climbing some mountains and structures, and then gliding around the map, fighting a few more groups of enemies, and then that brought the session to a close. And I think that's a pretty good recap of my two-hour hands-on event uh, with Immortals Phoenix Rising. I know up until this point, there had been a lot of questions about what exactly this new open world game would look like, but hopefully this video gave you guys a better idea and uh, a showcase to what the game is and what you can expect to play and see in it. I want to thank uh, Ubisoft again for sponsoring this video. And of course, once more, if you guys like what you saw and you want to learn some more, go ahead and check that link in the description below. And yeah, I hope you like this. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for checking this out. And I'll see you next time. Take it easy.